Uh, so I'm Hilton from uh, the, the Laboratory Castle Browser uh, um, in Paris. And uh, in the next 30 minutes, I'd like to, to um, give you um, an overview of, um, of computational methods we have been developing um, to increase the, uh, the, the acquisition speed in uh, Raman imaging. So most of the results I'm going to present are focused on the spontaneous Raman effect. I'm going to introduce you real quick what it is. And as time allows, I might show you uh, uh, some recent developments we have been doing on the direction of coherent Raman. Uh, all right. Um, so for those who are not uh, familiar, when you're gonna uh, familiar with, I'm gonna give a very crash course on on on, on Raman uh, uh, spectroscopy. So the atoms in a molecule are not, uh, you know, stuck in place. They have the vibrational uh, degrees of freedom, and to a certain type of vibrational motion, we can associate a vibrational energy. And and this gives rise to a peak in the vibration effect. Right? And if, if each different type of a of a of combination of, of a, uh, atomic masses and vibrational motions will give you different give a different uh, 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 peak in the vibrational effect. So that is to say that each molecular species will have its own uh, vibrational and unique vibrational effect. In other words, it's to say that if I read the uh, the, the the vibration spectrum, I have a, a barcode, I have a fingerprint uh, uh, of uh, the molecular species. And this is very powerful because now you can associate imaging with this. So instead of having a, a 2D image, I have now uh, a spectral image, a hyperspectral image, where the third dimension now is, is, is intensity of vibrational mode. So in case the vibrational modes are meaningless uh, to ordinary user, so we have a, a lot of. Uh, 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 processing tools that will uh, um, that will go from the in, in, uh, peak intensities to biomarkers, right? So to, to molecular uh, 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 quantitation uh, of a different species. So in this particular case, and not for our lab, but you can see um, the the local concentration of DNA, protein, and lipids in a single cell in a single shot. Uh, uh, so there is a lot of development being done. Uh, uh, to do uh, Raman imaging. Uh, so my background is in, in uh, biomedical uh, or biological uh, uh, imaging. And more recently, I've been coming back uh, to uh, materials uh, uh, spectra as well. But most of the, the things we do is, is, is really motivated by the challenge we have in bioimaging. And, and our dream, the, the, our community, uh, what we'd like to do is all the tools we have been developing for uh, for Raman uh, uh, imaging, is that would eventually would use this for some say, uh, biomedical application. And the, we have, and we are long. Uh, 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 there is a long road still that we can achieve for achieving that. Um, and, and we face typical uh, multiple challenges there. So the first one is that the great majority of results of imaging, high resolution imaging, you're going to find in the literature, are, are basically. Uh, uh, only done at shallow depth, right? So you cannot image deep in the, in the material uh, because things are not transparent, they are scattering, and this limits the penetration depth of the imaging tool. Um, the second problem for, for some certain types of Raman is that we have low speed. You cannot uh, 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 be too high speed, right? I acquire images that are high speed, and this is a problem for, Im uh, for living systems, right? Because we know the things inside us uh, they have uh, uh, they move around, so we need to develop tools that are faster than any of the uh, um, motion of uh, these organelles, for instance. And 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 very recently, uh, until very recently, we didn't have, for instance, super resolution. Some of these organelles in the cell, um, they have very uh, features that are much smaller than the, than the diffraction limit, and 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 eventually we'd like to uh, uh, image those those features with super resolution. So we've been uh, 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 in our group. We have been developing tools to tackle this first challenge in a new way. Um, we are not using a conventional microscope that you can buy from your, uh, from your best supplier. We're developing our own. Uh, uh, and, and we combine uh, a, a new type of microscope with uh, um, computational uh, and mathematical uh, modeling. Right? So these are non-conventional uh, microscopes. Uh, um, and we call this whole field computational uh, uh, microspectroscopy or, computa or computational. Uh, microscopy. So we typically associate uh, uh, active, uh, uh, non-passive uh, 
optical elements, typically spatial light modulators, um, with uh, with a high level of, of uh, mathematical modeling of uh, of the new device we have developed. And and the basic idea of this this computational microscopy is that we're going to develop some uh, modeling uh, that will sample this this this, this object. And it will give me why. Why is the raw data? It's meaningless. So I have a, a, a decoding information, an inversion operation that will treat this uh, raw data and then will give me the information that I want. Um, say, a, a image super resolved, a high speed uh, uh, image, or any image that it was acquired uh, uh, deep in some scattering material. In the rest, interest of time, I don't have, uh, I cannot cover all these uh, three. So I chose to focus on, on the things that we have done the most. And, and this is to tackle the problem of uh, speed in spontaneous Raman uh, uh, spectroscopy. And, 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 the, and the, we coined this field the compressive uh, Raman, because the idea here is that we're not going to sample the, the whole hyperspectrum uh, 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 in, in its whole. So we're going to considerably undersample the hyperspectrum. Uh, so the, the, the missing boxes, points that we, we did not acquire. And then we have this mathematical modeling, right? That we have some a priori information about the system. And then we will recover the information as if I had acquired the whole uh, uh, hyperspectrum. And we're going to uh, uh, um, uh, highlight a few of these uh, uh, algorithms and, and some uh, priori concepts we have behind them. And and uh, for uh, uh, for most of the results I'm going to show, like I said, this is the spontaneous Raman effect. So you have a laser, you can uh, uh, one photo, the molecule will decide when it, whenever it's going to emit this photo. So it's not a, a coherence, it's not driven. Um, and then the energy difference between the two, those two will give me a quantum of vibrational uh, motion. So this is a relatively simple experiment uh, 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 compared to the coherent uh, uh, Raman case. So it's, uh, uh, it's very cheap and, and, and straightforward to, to, to implement. But until recently, it was actually relatively uh, easy. So this is the basically a uh, um, uh, pipeline that you have in traditional uh, spectral imaging. So you have an object, you have the hyperspectrum, you, ha uh, you have a, a whole class of algorithms that will treat this hyperspectrum. They are, they are called uh, chemometrics. So SVD, PCA, uh, there are different types of procedures. And, and all you want to do is to find a, 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 a reduced dimensional representation of these hyperspectrum. Right? So you cannot find an infinite amount of a, of a, of a, of a, uh, of, of a uh, species. You always have some, some, some latent space, some reduced dimensional representation of the data set. And and in, in, in this is the one of pre, one one strong assumption that we have here is that we have a sparse chemical space uh, when we ap ap apply this uh, compressive Raman uh, approach. And this is true even for a biological system, even though we have thousands and thousands of, of molecules in there. If you do a Raman imaging of a cell, this is not this is not for us. It's, it's experimental data. There are many results like this, and you do this this approach, uh, this chemometric approach. Well, you always end up with a finite number of uh, of uh, uh, of, uh, of species that you can distinguish, right? So that is to say that in order to explain this whole hyperspectrum, I can basically do a linear superposition of all the spectra that arise from these, these different uh, uh, images, here, typically in the order of, of around five, right? Um, and the second approach, that uh, the second uh, a priori that uh, uh, help us. Uh, it's a bit more technical, but it helps us to increase the speed. Is the fact that the, the, the vibrational spectrum is sparse. Right? In certain cases, you have zeros, uh, 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 so you have peaks, and then it's just drawn typically by zeros, and this allows us uh, to speed up because we don't need to acquire, for instance, uh, spectral information around the regions that uh, don't have any spectral uh, uh, peaks. Um, so now uh, this is the, the, the let's say the general philosophy uh, uh, that we have in our uh, that we exploit in the compressive Raman. So I said that we needed the 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 new uh, uh, the non-conventional optical device, and this is what we call a programmable spectrometer. So uh, the, we use a conventional focal Raman microscope, and we instead of using a, a, a standard spectrometer, we use something that we can reprogram, right? Um, 
So this is the conventional spectrometer. You have a spectrum coming in in your uh, uh, your pinhole, then it's dispersed by the gray, and the lens will form the image of the spectrum in a single shot manner in a CTD. Now, what we do here in the, in the programmable spectrum in the programmable spectrometer is to remove the 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 the, the, the CCD and place instead a digital micromirror device. Right. So digital micromirror device are specialized modulators. Um, that can reflect the light in two different directions, right? Either typically plus twelve degrees or minus twelve degrees. Uh, for the for the for the modeling, what it does is is it's basically a, a, um, a very fast and reprogrammable spectral filter, right? Um, so we will uh, 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 will select which colors will be allowed to pass through, and which colors will be damped uh, uh, damped uh, by the optical system. And then these colors will be uh, now mixed together in a, in, a, in, a, in a digital detector. So this is not anymore an analog detector like the, like the CCD. These are detector uh, layer spots. They have single photon sensitivity. Uh, um, so you detect uh, whenever there is a photon generator click. And this is very nice because when you want to go high speed, the problem with the CCD is that as you increase your speed, you add more noise. And this is not the case for spot. You go the, the fast, and you, you keep shot noise limited. So you don't have additive noise. And this is one of the important aspects that allows us to do very high uh, speed imaging with this. I'm going to show you in the result. Uh, in the result. So um, before I show you uh, uh, things more oriented to, uh, uh, towards, let's say, optical uh, uh, engineering, I'd like to, to give you um, a general idea of of, uh, of the a priori information that we, we exploit in this uh, uh, in this approach, and we typically like to classify these in two different types of methods, two, two bigger classes of methods, and one is an unsupervised, uh, and the other one is supervised. And and the unsupervised, uh, it, the basic assumption is that uh, I I do not need to know my my spectrum. The only thing I'm going to assume is that I know how many chemical species there are in my system, right? And for that, we basically repurposed a, a well-established algorithm that's called matrix uh, completion. And let me uh, uh, guide you, uh, uh, walk you uh, uh, through uh, uh, the, the mathematical assumptions in this algorithm. So if you have a hyperspectrum or spectral image in, in, a, in a 2D representation, so this is wavelength and space, so this is a, a rank one uh, uh, matrix. So it's uh, one single spectrum. And basically, in each point in space, it's just rescale. If you have another chemical, it would be also a rank one uh, 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 matrix. Now, if I mix these two chemicals, um, I have a rank two matrix. Um, and, and then for each point in space, each, each of these chemicals would have a different uh, uh, weight. Now, for, for many, many decades, uh, uh, we know how to develop algorithms to go from this data set here to this, uh, to this spectral uh, uh, basis set uh, uh, here, or we call the eigen uh, spectrum. Um, so what has been thought is, um, what if we could skip? What happens if we could skip one bit of this, uh, of this, of this matrix here? Would I would I be uh, uh, would I be uh, would it be possible to design an algorithm to still reconstruct those spectra and retrieve back this information even though it was not not there originally? And yes, it, you can. And the, the basic reasoning here is that you always have a lot more, even if this data was not there, you have a lot more uh, uh, of information in this matrix. Then the number of points you want to reconstruct in this spectrum, right? So it's typically what we call mathematically an overdetermined equation. And this is the, the 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 basic mathematical assumption that you have in, in a framework called low rank matrix. So <clears throat> what this algorithm does is is that given a matrix M a spectral and the spatial direction uh, that is corrupted, that is basically missing these red points here. I can design an algorithm that will retrieve me X and Y. And these are, for instance, the, the, the image, the spectra, and these are the, the image of the few chemical species uh, that I have. Once I, I retrieve those two, I multiply them, and then I can retrieve back these uh, uh, red points. 
for for an experimentalist, what it means is that uh, if I can skip spectral points, it means I can speed up uh, the imaging uh, 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 acquisition very uh, fast. Um, so this is just a proof of concept, uh, a result we did here. So just to show, this is the wavelength and space. I mean, zoom in, zoom in this region here. Um, so dark blue is either data that was not taken or uh, um, <clears throat> a data that was not uh, taken or basically was uh, zero counts because uh, this is photo counting. We're detecting just a few photos. And, and now we reconstruct this uh, under the assumption of the of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a few uh, chemical species. And we can uh, zoom in uh, in the spectral uh, uh, reconstruction. And this basically were uh, polystyrene beads on top of a uh, water uh, and a glass cover clip. And the peaks are nice. They, they correspond to what we know from the literature. Um, um, so here's, for instance, uh, uh, we skipped one measurement out of two, and here we could skip one out of ten uh, um, measurements, and we can see that okay, the noise in the reconstruction increases, but we still have a, a, re a relatively high chemical contrast between these two. Okay, so this is very nice. It allows us to um, understand it to to get the you know, the hyperspec. Now what you can do is, is go to another type of approach we call supervised. Now you, you, there are many cases where you know the, the, the spectrum of the things you're going to look into. You just want to know um, how much of A or how much of B exists in my system. So what you can do um, is in, uh, instead of uh, uh, doing this matrix completion approach, you can say, well, I know this, this spectral information. I can design spectral filters. And then instead of uh, 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 acquiring, uh, as a normal camera does, a spectral point by spectral point for each point in space, you just acquire the, the measurement of, of, the, of, the, of the spectral information coming to the DMD by, by exploiting these two masks, right? And then you have a simple uh, uh, um, uh, linear equation that, that allows you to go back to uh, the local concentrations of polystyrene and melanin. So this was a a nice uh, 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 proof of concept result when we were starting this this work uh, um, was done uh, during the, the the master work of uh, of uh, Camille Scotet now researchers and in uh, in in South Australia and and what I like to 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 to, to emphasize here is the number of photons we 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 don't uh, we detected here so we we detect on average ten photons per uh, special pixel. And, and 10 photons per spatial pixel, you cannot use a conventional camera. So you would be in the readout noise uh, of, uh, uh, of this camera, right? Especially if you go to uh, uh, high speed. And because we have this spot detection, this is basically a digital, uh, uh, it's not analog, it's a digital detection. You don't have this additive noise, and this allows you to be uh, 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 more sensitive in terms of, of measurement. Other things that are nice, uh, they will show you an example in a second, um, is the fact that we have a lot, we do this chemometrics approach during the acquisition step. Um, and this, uh, this data compression that we have typically scales with the number of spectral points by the, uh, divided by the number of species that you have, and something in the order of 100 can be easily uh, uh, achieved. Of course, there is a, a, an advantage in, in, in increasing the speed. But this all, uh, obviously would depend on the signal level that you have. So this is what is nice. So that motivated us to to uh, uh, um, uh, to, 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 to to see that using exploring this this spontaneous uh, 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 Roman effect, uh, we could perhaps develop a high speed imaging technique. Uh, there are low cost, right? Nowadays, if you want to do uh, high speed imaging with the, with the Roman contrast. You need to resort to the coherent uh, uh, Raman techniques that, of course, they are 10 to 20 times more expensive than, than what you have in a spontaneous Raman. And, and we thought, OK, can we actually do this even faster? Can we potentially reach uh, a video rate uh, uh, with this? Of course, I wouldn't ask myself if it didn't have the answer, right? Um, and, and there is one, one thing you can do is, is to uh, parallelize. So instead of having a, a single point for focal, Basically, what a confocal does is image the, the focus on a gradient, the gradient on the DMD, the DMD on the spot. I parallelize this measurement. So instead of a point, now I have a line. Right? 
and then I can exploit the whole the other dimension of the DMD, and I, I scale the, the the acquisition by m number of pixels that I have in my uh, uh, SPAD detector array. Um, so there are two problems with this with this actually two challenges that we had to work on. The first one is that um, once you, you get to the DMD, after the DMD, um, you would have uh, 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 the spectrum is, is, is very large. It's much bigger than, than typical sizes that you have in, 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 a, in, a, in, a, in a pixel on a camera, right? So typically the millimeter range. What people have done is uh, in the past is actually to use very large uh, SPAD detectors, right? So, and this is a problem that we cannot scale up uh, by m times. So, one, one, uh, what we have done and what we learned with the Pink Floyd is that, uh, uh, and in, these are techniques from uh, ultra fast uh, uh, spectral shaping, you can add a second uh, 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 grading that will uh, cancel the dispersion of the, the first uh, uh, grading and recompress all the colors to a tiny uh, uh, spot. So, this was nice. So, now we can. Uh, basically, uh, recompress uh, uh, and increase uh, 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 the sensitivity of the measurement because now we can use uh, very small uh, uh, spot detectors that have much better performance than the large, uh, the large one. The second challenge uh, was in the detector itself, right? Um, um, until let's say something like I don't know, six to eight years ago, you couldn't find uh, uh, a spot arrays. Uh, um, that were performing enough to demonstrate that this is indeed a nice approach. And, and the problem is that uh, in order to, 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 uh, to demonstrate an increase in speed, I need to overcome this, 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 this equation here. So the, this is the coefficient of an array uh, of the single pixel. Um, M uh, is the number of pixels that you have. Uh, and F, uh, F is the field factor, right? So other arrays are typically don't have a great uh, 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 field factor. So if you put everything into for consideration, you need at least something like in the order of uh, 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 at least three pixels to demonstrate that you're better than a single pixel approach. And we only were able to do so because our colleagues in EPFL have developed these, uh, recently this, this detector that managed to bring the, the, the detection efficiency to something in the order of uh, uh, 30 to uh, 40 uh, uh, percent. And this is commercially available by Pi Image. All right, so now we fixed the problem of, uh, with the optics of the spectrometer. We, we found a good uh, 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 spatter rate. So Clemens put up the, the system and we performed the proof of concept uh, uh, experiment on this. So this is a, a polystyrene uh, and PMMA uh, covered by uh, 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 water. So you can see here uh, uh, the pixel dwell time. So this is the, the time that I spend per pixel to retrieve some uh, useful uh, 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 information. And you can see that with this approach, indeed, uh, it scales very nicely with the number of pixels. And of course, uh, uh, when you go to high speed, we have more noise, but you can still see that there is a nice uh, uh, chemical contrast uh, in this image. In this particular uh, example, we could reach uh, acquisition speeds that are compatible with the video rate image. We didn't demonstrate video rate imaging yet. There is a lot of engineering to be done to do so, but at least the, 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 it is a nice proof that uh, um, this can be achievable uh, with more uh, engineering uh, uh, of the system. Um, so let me just show you two applications that we are uh, uh, recently doing uh, uh, um, on this. So um, we are doing development, but also looking to uh, uh, e e interesting uh, use case that we could demonstrate this, uh, e the useful usefulness of this approach. Um, the first one is to, to was to show that this methodology is compatible with a, a, a biological uh, uh, species. So these are images of uh, brain slices. Um, uh, so here in, in red is uh, um, a lipid rich uh, and blue is uh, a protein rich. Uh, we look at the spectrum and we see this nice shift. And if you look at the literature, we see also the shift. So this demonstrates that the method uh, 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 is uh, uh, completely uh, uh, compatible uh, with bio uh, imaging, and and this type of images are not new, right? But they before they could only be taken with the cars, which is a lot more expensive than what we are doing. So we are doing this with a laser pointer ish, 
uh, 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 and doing spontaneous uh, uh, Raman imaging with uh, 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 with a very high uh, uh, speed. And and very recently we are exploiting this tool for uh, materials uh, imaging. Uh, um, in particular, uh, we started this, this, this business with a um, an electrocatalysis. Um, this is a specific case of a of oxygen evolution uh, of a materials lithium iridium oxide. So these are materials that are used in hydrogen cells. Mm -hmm. And 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 uh, uh, the basic idea here is that as you change the electrical potential between this this material and some counter electrode, you're gonna have evolution of the oxygen species, and at the same time you're gonna have insertion, intercalation of potassium in this material, right? And, and this is basically shown here in this in this uh, picture here. Um, so this is uh, without the, uh, uh, the potassium, this is with the potassium inside. And what happens here is that when the potassium ent enters in the network, you have a decrease in your uh, 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 Raman signal. So you have an all optical way to read out potassium intercalation uh, uh, in this system. And uh, we uh, uh, we made a simple uh, uh, experiment, uh, uh, an opera on one for the, for the specialist experiment of this uh, uh, with this technique to demonstrate that it's, it's fully compatible with it. And this is very nice because uh, uh, um, so the advantage here is not necessarily the high speed; it's more the 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 the, the uh, on the hardware compression of the data. Right? Imagine you want to do a spectral imaging uh, of 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 this system here uh, of many pixels. And for a long, long, long time, um, so you you easily will clog your your hard disk, right? So what we do here, we compress this data set at its acquisition uh, step. And there are other things that are nice for for the chemist, uh, is for instance to look into uh, uh, a chemically resolved image with high uh, spatial resolution. So I'd like to to play this again to show you. If you pay attention in this image. You see that the first cycle uh, is, is, is the second cycle and the third cycle are completely different, right? Uh, and 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 basically, uh, what you can do is with these is measure intercalation uh, uh, velocity, and this is very useful information for people uh, working in the development of batteries. And this is something we are exploring uh, uh, in the upcoming future. Mm -hmm. Right. So I have a, a, a two minutes. I will just uh, really. Uh, 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 highlight real quick uh, uh, some recent developments we have been done to push this this, uh, this idea to uh, uh, for here in Raman. So I won't go into the uh, uh, algorithm and and and, uh, uh, and optics details of this of this uh, um, tool. I feel free to ask if you're interested. Um, so there have been a lot of activity. Um, we have demonstrated that all these computational methods. Are, are are really nice to to overcome challenges in, in for instance stimulated Raman scattering. Others have done this to demonstrate that indeed this type of computational approach can allow you to uh, do high speed uh, uh, and compressed uh, imaging uh, by other uh, uh, groups. But this is the easy case. This is the easy case because it's a, what we call it's a linear system. It's, it's incoherent. Uh, uh, from a mathematical uh, uh, perspective, because what you read out in the spontaneous and the SRS uh, is, uh, is, is, uh, the, is the imaginary part of the, of the, of the, the thing that gives you chemical contrast, so the, the chi-3. And this is really, really related to, to the concentration of the species you have. So you can use many uh, 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 mathematical work that uh, exist out there to use straight away with this uh, uh, method. Now the challenge is in, 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 the, in the, the coherent cases, uh, the cars for you, because when you read out the, the spectral information, um, the, the intensity peaks are not directly related to uh, the material quanti quantities, uh, because you have spectral interference, and the spectral interference will complicate an analysis, and therefore you're not quantitative now anymore on the on the regression. So there has been a lot of development to do a, a, a phase resolved, uh, spectral phase uh, resolved uh, uh, approach of this. So I want to overview uh, uh, all of these uh, of methods, but they typically use this type of scheme. So you have a narrow band pump, a broad band stokes, and a narrow band uh, probe, and you have in a single shot manner the uh, broad band uh, anti stokes Now, uh, the problem at least uh, uh, to go high speed with this 
is that uh, you need to, re to, to, to record the whole hyperspectrum and which takes time. So you need to use a, 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 a camera. And, and the second problem is that you, you lose the, the phase information when you, when you do so. Um, so we changed a little bit our mindset. So instead of having uh, a narrowband bump and probe, we said, OK, let's use a, um, a broadband bump and a broadband probe and a narrowband. And when you do so, what happens is that each color of your probe will basically shift your uh, Raman spectrum. So now I can have the blue side uh, of a Raman spectrum interfering with the red side of the same uh, uh, Raman uh, spectrum. So that is to say that now the, the the phase information is not lost anymore as it is the case here, right? So the phase information is just uh, uh, is physically imprinted in the in the measurement process, and you need to have some computational approach to disentangle this information back. I won't bother you to do with the details of, of this. I just want to show you uh, uh, some, some some preliminary uh, results where we have mathematical model of this, this, this approach, develop an optical system to, to do the acquisition, and you can nicely retrieve, uh, for instance, here is the imaginary real and, and, and absolute part of the of different chemicals. They are great. They, 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 they show that the method is, uh, is working uh, well. But the reason why we want to do this is because we want to bring this compressive, uh, the supervised compressive Raman approach to the coherent, to the CARS case, which you could not do before because of this loss of phase information, right? And and now that we have this this interference phenomena happening, and that we can retrieve uh, 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 the real and imaginary part of, of the measured quantities, we can really nicely do uh, 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 images, a uh, compressed image. So these images, these did not taken the full hyperspectrum. These were four measurements done to retrieve the image of of these different. Uh, 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 chemicals in a, in a time that is very challenging to be done uh, uh, with a uh, pixel dot time that is very challenging to be done with a with a conventional. Yeah. All right, so uh, um, this brings me to my conclusion. So I hope you convinced you um, that uh, uh, doing this, this this computational approach where we undersample the hyperspectrum, we can increase the the acquisition uh, speed. And you have different uh, 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 a priori knowledge, a priori uh, uh, schemes to, to, to do this reconstruction. Uh, one we call unsupervised, the other one we call supervised. It's fully compatible with bioimage. And now we're moving to uh, also to a, a material science application. Now, if you didn't understand anything about this, this presentation, what I want you to, to, uh, to get uh, uh, from it is the following. So this is how people typically see uh, uh, Raman. Spontaneous Raman. It's an extremely slow image method. It takes ten minutes, take minutes, hours, sometimes days to get uh, a, an image. Now, I want to convince you that if you develop a microscope uh, that is specialized, heavily specialized, it's going to look into a very particular problem. Um, this microscope can enhance its performance extremely well, but for one very specific uh, 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 case. And then it can uh, considerably increase uh, 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 the imaging of this uh, particular uh, uh, application. And this is uh, represented here by this turtle. OK, so I'd like to, to thank uh, uh, my group again uh, uh, um, and the fund the agency uh, and you for your time. And uh, happy to take any questions.